hard drive. Twenty Twenty Jeep Wrangler, unlimited Sahara Eco Diesel without launch control. Dude, that's good. Torque and horsepower. 442 pound-feet of torque, 260 horsepower from a three-liter turbo diesel V6. And that's what everybody wanted in a Jeep, a diesel. And if you're watching this video without subscribing, we know a lot of you guys are. It's cool, but consider subscribing. We pretty much only post full reviews on Tuesdays and Fridays, maybe some track stuff. You're not gonna get spammed with vlogs or anything. But definitely consider putting the notification bell on as well, because we also do live streams sometimes. <laughs> I actually love this. I straight up love this drivetrain. What do you love the most about it? The torque! And there it is. Oh man, this is quick. It right off the line, it's amazing. The torque would probably be good for towing, and I think that's why people wanted the diesel, right? Yes, unfortunately, it doesn't actually increase the towing capacity or anything like that, but I'm sure it feels a lot better while towing. And then this has a different transmission because it is a diesel as well. Yes, yeah, so you can't actually option the manual with this. You have to go with the ZF 8-speed, and I absolutely love this transmission. But there are no paddles. You can only shift with the shifter. Yes, not a big deal. No, and I like not having paddles because then I've got my radio buttons easily accessible. That's right. And since this is a diesel, the red line's pretty low. It's only about four and a half thousand, but the gearing is optimized for towing and for sends at low RPMs, which is amazing because you have full torque at a very low RPM. Yeah, that's why I was so confused when you're doing that launch. I'm like, why is it short shifting every time? I'm like, oh yeah. Lots of gears to go through at low RPM. Diesel. And this drivetrain is actually borrowed from the Ram 1500, so the transmission and the engine. And we actually have a Ram Eco Diesel review, so check that out. But they did have to modify a couple things in the engine bay just because this is a Jeep. So you have to have the high water fording depth. So I believe they actually had to raise the alternator. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They Jeeped it out. And I love the way that the torque comes on. Like this is my favorite powertrain in the Jeep by far. Because it's automatic and manual transmissions are a little annoying to drive in Jeeps. In Jeeps, yes. But the fact that the torque comes on so good and it just feels way better than the regular V6 does. Yeah, this is a great feeling Jeep drivetrain. Yes, and even the suspension is also really good. Number one, the steering, but we'll get to that in a second because we are in cliche corner, so let's send it through here. And yes, there is body roll because it's a Jeep, but man, this thing can still send. Yeah, yeah, Jeeps go hard through cliche. Like surprisingly hard, this is really good. And for such a big off-roading vehicle, nothing is unpredictable. I mean, it is big, yeah. but it acts like it should, and it feels good. And it is rear wheel drive because we're in too high. So now let's talk about that steering and why we love it so much. Why do we love it so much? Well, because we don't have to do so many minor adjustments while driving on the highway. Oh yeah. And I think that comes down to the tires. Having like the big off road tires on a Rubicon makes it move so much more while driving and having a more road based tire makes it a lot easier to keep straight on the highways. Yeah, so a non-Rubicon Jeep, which is the hardcore rock crawling off-roading one, will handle much better on the road, and this is evidence of that. And a non-Mojave Jeep. That's right. Not that we know anything about that. So then what would be the Continental recommended tire for the Eco Diesel Wrangler? The Terrain Contact AT, just like I have on my Raptor. And what if it was winter? The Viking Contact 7. And the cold weather and snow is coming soon, so make sure you get those winter tires on. Yo, know, can diesel Jeeps do burnouts? Yeah, of course they can. Let's find out. <laughs> And then what do you think of the wheel design on this Jeep? I think it's okay. Could be a lot better, especially with some Blackhorn BH02s. Having the same ones that you have on your Raptor on this? Yes. Yes, I really like that Photoshop job. And you should probably get a set of those at blackhornoffroad.com. Yes, free shipping in Canada and the US, 5% off the already affordable prices with discount code STRAIGHTPIPES at checkout. So since this is the turbo diesel, it actually gets some suspension changes. So the springs actually have a stiffer spring rate because the engine's a lot heavier. So it's noticeably stiffer than a regular V6 Wrangler, but it's still very comfortable on the road. It's still a Jeep. But one thing this Jeep still doesn't have is really good lane keep assist. It actually has no lane keep assist. But it does have adaptive cruise, which is really nice on the highway. And blind spot monitoring and like rear cross traffic and all of that stuff. Yeah. And earlier I mentioned that it can't actually tow more, even though it is a diesel, it still can tow 3,500 pounds, which is a couple jet skis worth. One final manual send, downshift, downshift, downshift. And there's that torque. Oh baby, 400 pound feet. Nailed it. <laughs> All right, my turn to drive? Yes, it is. Launch. Yeah, like it's not super fast, but it's got that cool diesel sound. Ooh. 
It's so much better than the gas V6. It just like kicks you in the back. And then you said this is your favorite drivetrain in any Jeep. Do you not remember the track hog? Yeah, well, in a Wrangler is what I obviously meant. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, this has one of my favorite features of any Jeep. It's got the convertible top top. And now our audio is probably totally messed up, but it is the best part of this car other than the eco diesel. Again, you don't have to hold that, but yeah, but once you start holding. It. Yes. And the reason this is my favorite top on a Jeep is because you get so much out of it. It's pretty much like having no roof on it at all, and it's all by the click of a button. It's super low commitment, not having to have the freedom top that you have to like take off and don't do all the clips and store it somewhere. It's amazing. And then just like all the other Jeeps, you can remove these doors with the toolkit inside here. And on this one, you can also remove the back window panels. So when you have this all the way back, you can have those little panels off as well. It's probably the ideal Jeep setup and we didn't know how much we'd like it until we actually had this. Yeah, exactly. This is 100% my favorite. And then those things in the back, you can store them in a bag in the back and then you place that behind the back seat clip it in and then there's one clip that says you need to clip into the floor hook but it doesn't reach with the windows in there oh that's weird so they set it up to fail i unless i'm missing something but it's super weird oh there i did get it well look at that third time's a charm it's a charm <laughs> all right let's close this while driving except i had a trouble where i couldn't close it on the highway so i guess there's like a speed restriction to it I think it's just like an actual just resistance of wind type thing. Because it's not a sunroof? Yeah, because it lets you press the button. So then for the rest of the looks of this Jeep, kind of looks exactly like every new Wrangler. Nothing special except for the Eco Diesel badge is different. Yes, and the color's pretty cool because we haven't had one in this color yet. Yeah, nice sparkly blue, but it's hard to get the car to pop in a lot of different lights. Overall, just looks like a Jeep, and I'm super excited for the new Bronco to come out because it looks amazing. Oh, and by the way, driving this Jeep, I had to remember to start giving the Jeep wave. Oh yes, that catch, is a thing. Catch you off guard, there's a lot of Jeeps on the road. You're like, every two minutes, like, yo, 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 what up? I'm excited for all the new Broncos on the road. Do, do they get to wave to the Jeeps? Oh, I think the Jeep people are gonna have to decide that I'm not a Jeep person so I can't decide that but we all need to unite I think you should just wait and everyone should wave to everybody what was that a Mazda CX-30 you didn't wave I waved in the rear view <laughs> see okay. you later a little, little center cliche love my rear wheel drive FCA products exactly a little bit of tire squeal because rear wheel drive it's but it, it's good and you can go fast and it's predictable you know it's not gonna like plow out or anything it just kind of just stays on track yeah and it does have stability control and traction control and that keeps you on track it's a lot better than i thought it would be for a jeep totally agree and now i want to do something that we haven't yet done in a jeep what's that box test oh yeah the box test box test one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 14, 15 is our new box test member, pin pin 890, and 16. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Shockingly good for a box oriented looking vehicle. Yeah, and I thought it'd be a lot less because when you take the roof off, you've got that structural frame in there and I thought that would get in the way of the boxes, but this thing absolutely killed it. And the way the seats fold all the way flat, it's so great. It's really good. It's a nice setup. And then how about these seats now that we're inside now? Oh, I love the color of them and the fact that they're leather. They're very comfortable. Yeah, no issues with that. And I guess they're probably kind of water resistant because it is a Jeep. I would hope so. <laughs> and then inside we've got the whole new Jeep interior. We've got the cool gauges, analog on the side and digital in the middle with a lot of cool different graphics and displays. But when you start up the Sahara, the animation is so laggy and slow. It really is. It's, it's criminal how slow it is. Yes but it does show every single digit while you're driving on the Speedo, so that's cool. And in case anyone's wondering why we're not off-roading right now, we've pretty much off-roaded every single Jeep. Pretty here's, much. Here's some clips. So this is why we've been doing some cliche cornering. And it's nice to see what this actually feels like on the road in regular circumstances. And why do we have the doors on? Because it's cold outside. <laughs> I, uh, I tried taking them off earlier. It does come on and off pretty easily, but Jeep was telling me that there's one thing on the door. You know the thing that keeps the door from like going all the way open and like locks into certain places? Yeah, yeah, the little metal piece. When you take the door off, if that pushes all the way in, you need to go to the dealer to get that pulled out. Ouch. Yeah, but like, I definitely try myself to pull that out. <laughs> no way, dealer knows more than I do. 
And back to the doors, when you come up to this, you just put your hand there, it unlocks, you can click the button to lock it. It is very convenient. You don't have to worry about it like on the old Jeeps where you had to take the key in and out every single time. Yeah, it's, even the G-Wagon. Isn't the G-Wagon you have to take the key out? The future is so convenient and I love it. Well, the present and I love it. Yes, it's very good. And it's an option on this that I would highly, highly recommend. You, know, you need that on every car. Yeah, it's so nice. And then how about this shifter and four wheel drive selector? They work and they are very functional and they look cool. I, I like the Jeep graphic on top of the shifter. Yeah, yeah. But to get into four high and four low, you really have to manhandle that thing. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's kind of cool. It's part of- It's fun being able to do that like you're supposed to. Yes, it's part of the experience and it feels like it's a mechanical connection. <laughs> and since this isn't the Rubicon, it's the Sahara, we don't have any disconnecting sway bars or crazy buttons for that kind of super off-roady stuff. Yeah, but I wouldn't doubt that this is still more capable than like every other car on the road or SUV. It's probably more capable than the Bronco Sport. <laughs> A lot more capable. And what about the visors? Oh, let's find out. Three, two, one. Yes! Oh, I didn't expect that. I mean, every Chrysler's good. Yeah, but I forget F A lot. FC, no, no, what's that new? Stellantis? Yes, yeah, Stellantis. Yeah, Atlantis. <laughs> Stellantis. Okay, and then cup holders. If it's a small T, absolutely fine. Nice grippy cup holders. All right, I changed my mind about the cup holder. To grab it, I always need to grab it from the top from here because the armrest, I can't grab it like this while driving or going around the armrest like this. It's a total pain. I'm just gonna pop off lids one day. I hate this cup holder because of this armrest. And as for my driving position, I can have my elbow right here on the armrest and right here, and it's perfect for driving and resting those arms. And Yuri, we're pretty far into this review and I haven't heard anything about the infotainment yet. I was saving the best for last. Oh! Not like the best infotainment, but like my favorite thing. <laughs> it's okay. actually a really good infotainment, which we've said in so many different FCA videos. Yeah, it's the same Uconnect that we have in pretty much every FCA product. And it's the same one that's in the Maseratis as well that we really like. Yep. It does have Apple CarPlay, does have Android Auto, but it's not a widescreen setup, but it doesn't really matter because Android Auto probably wouldn't be widescreen. It's usually not. Well, it takes up the full screen. I know, but even if it was widescreen. It takes up the full screen. Get it? Because I'm not an eye sheep. Ah, sheeple. Uh, <laughs> I'll be joining you. Like, oh, my baby. widgets. My <laughs> widgets. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. And then we do have Sirius XM rewinding satellite radio, which I absolutely love. My only complaint is this replay button. You have to click it to get the replay options. And when you change a station, it disappears every single time. But when you click it, you don't lose anything. You just gain more. They should have that up there the whole time. Yo, Wiz Khalifa, still Wiz, came on XM44 and I rewound it like 17 times. It was the best. Not sure what song that is. And then we do have a backup camera in here, which is actually the clearest backup camera I've probably ever seen. It's so good. Super high res, super HD. Love this backup camera. Let me show you what it looks like backing into my Prowler compared to all these other luxury cars and normal cars. So are you saying that this is better than some other luxury cars, which cost, I don't know, three times as much? four times as much, five times as much, this is the best. It's really, really good. But this one doesn't have the front camera, which you can get on some other trims like the Rubicon. Okay. That's pretty much everything with the Eco Diesel Wrangler. Let's get to the price. Well, this one's optioned out to $72,385. Canadian. That's a lot of money. Yeah, but I guess Jeep doesn't really have any competitors until this year. Well, yeah, I guess next year because the Bronco. And the Bronco is not even going to offer a diesel. So there you go. So would you take this diesel powertrain over a gas powertrain in any other Wrangler or Gladiator in the future? 100%. This is my favorite powertrain fitted to a Jeep until they shoved the 392 V8 into this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they kind of had to because the Bronco. So that's still a concept. It's coming. So having driven this and the Gladiator, would you take this or a Gladiator? I'm still team Gladiator. I think it looks so cool and awkward. It's definitely awkward looking. I think it's definitely the cooler thing because it's new and it's just, it's a truck. I like trucks. But maybe if I had a two door Wrangler and I could store the doors and the roof at home or something like that, I'd consider a Wrangler over a Gladiator. A two door Wrangler is definitely cooler than a four door Wrangler. Let us know in the comments below, Wrangler, Gladiator, or the Bronco. And click over here for a playlist of other Jeeps, such as our Rubicon off-road review. The off-road review is very off-road review. It was fun. It was a Gladiator off-road. The California one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one.